All right, hi everybody, John Meadows here. And I have another special guest. I go way back with this guy. This guy, like I was never in his weight class. It's probably a good thing because he would have crushed me. <laughs> but um, Chris is a longtime veteran. Obviously, you guys know I'm a veteran. I've been around a long time. Competing back in the early 2000s and late 90s. I always ran into Chris. He was the perennial favorite at the USA and the Nationals. And we have a little different video today. We're not doing a workout or an exercise index video. This is actually something that's way more important. I want to talk about challenges and um, as you guys know, I had my colon removed, near-death experience, and I believe I came out of that as a better person. Chris has a story too that's um, it's very powerful. I want to talk to Chris today about you know what happened and kind of where you're at now, Chris. And I see Chris. What's your Instagram? Uh, IFBB Pro Chris Dim. IFBB Pro Chris, Pro Chris Dim. So I've been watching Chris over the years and he's just fighting this guy has no quit in him he's fighting he's fighting and that kind of heart is something that i can tell you that my followers i can tell you they appreciate that so i thought it'd be awesome for for everybody to hear kind of where you're at now kind of what you've been through the challenges and the struggles because i think people see like you know people's success and they they don't see the struggle and in a case like yours and a case like mine, it was a little bit more than a normal struggle, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. So I would love for you to talk a little bit about, you know, what was going on in your life and the, you know, the challenges that you've had to overcome and where you're at now and just, just talk to us, man. You know, like what's going on in your world? Man? Well, I appreciate you wanting to get, get me on this interview. I really appreciate that. I like watching your stuff too, man. And just to see what you're able to evolve and, and, and your training style, you know, everybody know Mountain Dog, man. Oh, it's like <laughs> it's like a, a big name now. So, thank you. Um, and just to see everything, man, that's it. It's it's just to to watch that. To me, I'm I'm proud of you, man. What you're able to do for yourself, you. and really overcome. And I know your family, man, and everything else. Just like my background. Yep. So really familiar with it. But you know, I go way back with John, like John was talking about. But you know, I competed in, I won at the National, 2013 won the USA 2012 and then I came out right away after the national four months later and took top three next to Lee Priest and uh, and um, uh, Dexter Jackson so Dexter was first Lee Priest was second and I took third um, and it just it just really really skyrocketed but it took me a while man to get get up to my pro card it took me 16 years so I was kind of like you know like John here you know it took him a while to, to get his pro card too so we were one of those person that we just push and push and push and push and uh, we don't quit. And it took me 16 years to turn pro. And, uh, but you know, let's go ahead and fast forward where it really, really makes sense. Um, I had my, um, I had an aorta dissection, okay? So that was back in 2007. And my whole aorta burst. And 99% uh, of the people don't live through that and they gave me a 10% chance to live. And um, I came out of that and walking a point A to point B, I was out of breath. And I had to retrain myself, picking up three pound weights and then getting on a treadmill from walking to running. Uh, finally got to the point where six months later, muscle memory came right back again. And um, you know, most people wouldn't even come back from that again. But 2009, muscle memory came back. I gained all my weight back and I figured, you know what, let me, let me do another show again. Took top three at the Europa and uh, qualified for my third Mr. Olympia. And then right after that, um, you know, they said my second part of my aorta was starting to expand too, so I needed to get surgery on that. So they cracked me twice for the second time. And again, after I got that done, walking to point A to point B, out of breath completely again, start training myself again. And then uh, right after that, they said the last portion of the aorta needed to be fixed too. So they put a stent in, and um, the second uh, doctor told me don't let them do the stent, it won't hold up. And they convinced me to do a stent anyway, because I, I had to go back to my, my, my hospital because, you know, obviously you go back to where your, your medical is, right? So they convinced me to do a stent, and then um, sure enough, a couple years after that, the stent, the blood flow went around the stent instead of through the stent. Mm. So then uh, they did an emergency cut. That was uh, 
six years ago. They did, they cut me from the back of my shuttle blade, through my rib cage, all the way to the front of my stomach, opened me up sideways, fillet me, took the stent out and fixed me the right way. 15 hours later, when I woke up, I thought it was a dream. They put me in this ice suit for, for two days, try to preserve everything. I didn't know what was going on. They didn't tell me anything. And so I was still drugged up. And um, finally, after the second day, I was so cold. They, I like, please take this off, take this off. They took it off, still drugged up. And they told me that um, I had a spinal cord injury that I'll never walk again. And um, the doctor who did the second surgery is the one who did that last surgery. And um, he is pretty much in tears because we became pretty good friends. And he said, Chris, I don't know what I did. I don't know what happened. I did the same procedure like I always do, but you have suffocation to the spine and uh, you have a spinal cord injury and you'll never walk again. And um, I, I, I just told him, you know what? Doctor, you saved my life. And most people would be pretty pissed off at him. But to me, he saved my life. If, if you know, you got to remember, I could have died because the blood flow went around it. So he had to do that emergency cut and take the stent out. And um, I just told him, you know what? If walking is the only thing I got to deal with, you know what? I'm going to overcome it like everything else. It took, took me 16 years to turn pro. I'm not going to uh, quit after six years. You know, I can crawl now, which they gave me a 0.02% I'll ever walk again. So guess what I got to say to that? <laughs> nah. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Overcome, it all starts with your mindset. And a lot of people, when a doctor tell them something or someone else tell them something, they buy into it versus buying into your own dream, right. buying into your own goals, what you want to do in life. Um, and that's how I kind of look at it. You know what, as I, I was that 98 pound wrestler my freshman year and people laughed at me when I say I was gonna be a bodybuilder. You know, and then never thought I was gonna be the first Asian to get on the Mr. Olympia stage. But it was that little step that I did, you know. I didn't look at the whole picture of getting on the Mr. Olympia stage. I look at, let me put on five pounds a year, let me put on 10 pounds a year. Same thing with my spinal cord injury. Let me go ahead and get a little bit more movement in. As long as I'm doing something, as long as I'm taking steps, I'm happy about it, man. I, I, I count my blessing every single time. Every day I, I have a notebook and um, I write down every single thing that I'm grateful for. It takes me about 10, 10 minutes to do it, but you know what? I'm so glad every single day when I get up and I'm, I'm still alive. You know what? I'm blessed. So let me, <clears throat> let me ask you this. So when you woke up from that surgery, what was the first thing that went through your head when you woke up? I, I'm, I've got to, I think I can relate to this. I'm going to share with you why I asked you that question. But before I do that, what went through your mind when you first woke up out of that surgery? I thought it was a dream. I thought it was a nightmare. I, I thought it wasn't real, yeah. you know? And um, to be honest with you, I didn't even think for myself because I knew at that moment that if I thought for myself, I know I was going to break. Yeah. So what I did was I put motivational stuff from the beginning, from day one, and did not listen to myself. And the doctor came in and said, you know what, I'm gonna put you on antidepressants because you're gonna go through a lot and you're gonna go through some highs and lows yeah. and your lifestyle is gonna change forever. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, I think like if you take somebody who's been, been really successful and then you essentially tell them something that powerful, like you're never gonna walk again look at how successful you've been so that's like a it's like a hammer hitting you in the head oh yeah you go from the number one asian bodybuilder in the world overnight lifestyle change that and that's just the reason the, one of the reasons why i wanted you to talk to people is because that message is so powerful i mean you've had to so if you look at it from a bodybuilding perspective you've had to kick and fight and scratch i did 16 pro qualifiers myself before i finally got it and this is what makes success. This is this never ending, I got to get a little better, a little better, and a little better. That's what made you awesome in bodybuilding. And now we have another setback, but I like what you said about, I get a little better every day. And I watch your, and I watch your Instagram and I see the things that you're doing. Just, you're doing that. I see, a, you, and you talk about it. You always talk about, hey, I did this today. 
I did this today. That little bit, you know, and I even it even applies to my life as a as a dad. I got to get a little bit better about being a dad. Like that kind of mindset. I wish we could bottle that mindset up and just hand it to people. So because a lot of times what I see today, Chris, is people don't understand what it takes to get from point A to point B. It's just I want to get there overnight. Oh yeah, I they want that microwave overnight. results. Got to get it overnight. Got to get overnight. And and if you guys like, if you can just take what Chris is saying and and what I've said over the years about getting. And this is obviously more powerful than my message, is every day, man, just get a little better. You don't have to accomplish everything overnight, but everybody wants to have this overnight success. And we're, let's talk about this. Like, where are you at right now compared to a year ago? Like, in the last year. Oh, man. You know, I have a little bit more feelings from the belly button down now. Um, you know, I got some stem cells done a couple, three, about three weeks ago. You know what, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm not afraid to, to say it, I have no shame. I didn't have the money to do stem cells, you know, and um, I've always believed like anything else in life, don't worry about the know-how, just do it. You know what I mean? The know-how will figure itself out. And like, I always believe that if you start the flow, God gives you the stream, but if you don't do nothing, you get nothing. So. Um, Next thing you know, you know, I get a phone call, and they they want they they're gonna do the stem cells for free, man. And I, I, honestly, like to me, that was a blessing in itself because uh, one of the guys messaged me from from um, on, on Instagram. He went to Panama and got it done that same week. He paid 47k, and and like I'm getting it for free, and I can go back every six months, and they're gonna keep giving me more and more and more until I start getting all my feelings and back and, and, and taking steps and everything else. So it kind of works together, but if I just, the same thing like you were talking about, if I, if I did just stem cells and I didn't do anything about it and, and didn't really put it to work, you know, you can get all the power. It's kind of like if I gave you power, okay, and I said you can do everything you want to do, and, but if you sat around and didn't do anything about right. it, right? right? Nothing's, Nothing's going to happen. You got to go out there and really push yourself. And that's exactly that, uh, how I feel about life. It's, it's all the exact same way, you know? Yeah. Well, there's an old saying, where the mind goes, the body will follow, right? Absolutely. And, um, you know, in my mind, I know when I've, I've been through challenges, when I had my surgery, when I had my colon removed, it was, an, it was an emergency surgery. I was bleeding to death and I was in shock. They rushed me in emergency surgery. And I remember I woke up and on the way to surgery, I thought it's all over, I'm done. I was with it enough to know that this was bad, I lost a lot of blood. And I woke up and I said, man, I got a second chance. And like I went to work with a different attitude, you know, all the stuff that used to bother me mentally. And it took a sledgehammer to hit me in the head for me to kind of figure out the power of your mind. And even at work, people when I came back, they were like, man, you seem like a different person. It's just my mindset has changed. It was like, man, I got another chance now. I got mm -hmm. a second chance. Yep. You know, unfortunately, it took something like that to make that click for my brain. Um, but you're right, man. It's like whatever you're, if you're, and then you can even simplify it down to the kind of people you hang out with. Like if you always hang around negative people, you're probably going to be a negative person. Absolutely. Because that's what's always going into your mind. You're oh, just yeah. hearing negativity, negativity, negative. So, you know. The people you surround yourself with, your mindset, all that stuff manifests itself. And, um, you know, that is what, to me, is what personally has helped me become a better person. It's trying to have a better mindset, getting the right people around me. Yeah, you know? having better people around you, you know what I mean? To, to take you where you need to go in, in a positive way. And it's not, you know, if you get somebody who's cocky, but they can take you where they, they, they need to go, that's not the right people you want around you anyway. You want somebody who's humble. You want somebody who's got your best interest, but at the same time, as friends and family, right, you, you help each other out, whatever yeah. you can do, you know? Yeah, you know, um, that's one thing, like when I go to seminars, I always talk about people, I always tell this to people, like, man, if there's one piece of advice I could tell you guys, it's get the right people around you. Oh yeah. You know, and you see this in our sport a lot, you know, people have a lot of yes men around them, and people who don't really have their good, you know, the people that I respect the most that have been around me in this industry were hard on me, but they built me up. Mm -hmm. Like, they didn't lie to me. 
you know, they kept it positive, but they were honest with me. It's like, you got to do this better. You got to do that better, man. I still got your back, but that, that positivity brought with realism and just being real with people, um, that's worth its weight in gold, right? Well, yeah, especially, you know, being in the industry that you're in, it's like, <laughs> if, if you got people that pumping you up all the time and you know you got a fat ass and you get on that stage, you're going to lose. <laughs> you want somebody who's going to be honest with you, hard on you, that's got your best interest, that care for you, somebody. you know? Let's talk about this. So, um, we briefly chat about this. What's coming up for you? You know what? I've been getting a lot of emails and a lot of message about people wanting me to do the wheelchair competition. And um, I kept telling them no, I kept telling them no. And um, then this year, I don't know what click, but I need something to shoot for. I'll be honest with you. I mean, you know, me and my girlfriend, Jill, like we run a fit body boot camp, and we're always dealing with people who's just trying to get in shape, overweight people and everything else. And I love it. I love what I do. Um, but I need something that challenged me and being in a wheelchair, it's hard, man. I'll be honest with you. I get up with pain 24 hours a day from being cut, the nerve pain. If I lay on this side, I feel like somebody kicked me when I first get up in the morning. Um, you know, no shame, man. I got to use a catheter every four hours. I can't piss like normal people. Um, you know what I mean? And like, I can't feel anything from the belly button down, how to train my bowel movements. So you're talking about the the, the overcoming in the mind, you know, what you got to do. So it's just not just a wheelchair thing. But um, they finally talked me into, and then like, honestly, those guys are my inspiration. I have to see what they go through. And I only been in the wheelchair for a short amount of time. And I'm like, man, if these guys, you know, it's hard working out being in the wheelchair, guys. You guys don't understand, like, seriously, like I can't bounce around from machine to machine. You know, m my old coach, you know, mm -hmm. one of the guys you like, Milos, he, he goes and does a, a <laughs> yeah. thousand giant set, right? Yeah. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> I got to stay in one station and work out. But not only that, being able to transfer into those machines are hard. So I had to improvise and figure out my workout. But hey, at the end of the day, these guys pump me up and motivate me. And they, to, uh, uh, yesterday was the first wheelchair uh, Olympia that they had. That kind of motivates me a little bit more. Like, I want that title now, man. So. Um, you know, so I'm going to do the, uh, the Arnold Classic wheelchair and then I'm going to come back next year and take this title, man. Listen, That's my motivation. I've seen those guys too and they look really good. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. they are jacked, man. They yeah, look yeah, really yeah. Good, Harold, so. man, is no joke. Yeah. He's been winning everything. Yeah. Talked to him yesterday. He's like, man, you're going to push me to my limit now because you, you're doing it. I'm <laughs> like, you got it, man. I'm, I got this. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, man, I appreciate your time, Chris. Man, just keep up the good work. You're inspiring people. Making a difference in people's lives is about the best calling that God can give us. And you're Absolutely, doing it. 100%. So make sure you guys support Chris. He's at IFBB Pro Chris Dimba, um, on Instagram, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, follow him in his journey. He's inspiring everyone. And listen to the things he said today. Apply them to your life. And again, Chris, I just want to thank you for your time. Thanks, bro. And we'll Appreciate see you at Darnold Classic in my hometown, and I will be there. Oh, yeah, 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 I yeah. I will be yeah. cheering for you from the audience. <laughs> so. Awesome. Right.